Dear Chemco family, welcome to already our 12th season of Chemcon TV's news bulletins. After 25 years, Chemcon Europe returns to Vienna. Also this week we look forward to sharing news and information from Chemcon Europe 2023 with you. In this series of CCTV's news bulletins you can, as always, expect interviews in which authority and industry experts share their visions on hot and trending topics. Today we have in store for you an interview on GHS and especially the EU CLP revision. As of tomorrow, soundbite from the sessions. Every day a statement of the day and a forecast for the day. And also in Vienna, a knowledgeable local reporter sharing great stories and city highlights from fascinating locations. We will start at the National Library, an awe-inspiring treasure trove of knowledge and culture where history comes alive amid magnificent halls lined with century-old books and manuscripts. In the Grand Hall, with marvelous marble statues and delightfully decorated dome, a vast collection of priceless books. That's where we have an appointment with our local reporter Charles. Charles, what a luring location to start a journey through the various ages of Vienna. Indeed, Sheet, that might be a perfect spot to start to around Vienna. I'm here at the State Hall of the National Library, the jewel of the palace, and known for its excellent fresco ceilings, the statues of the Habsburg family showing us the fate of the Greek gods and the history of the Habsburg family. Reflected in this fresco is the original arrangement of the books, when the state hall was divided into a war and a peace site. The library was built in the early 18th century and has a surprising length of almost 80 meters and a height of 20 meters. An enormous space, uh, of course, which you need when you want to house a waste collection of a roughly 200,000 books. The book collection of today's Austrian National Library goes back to various earlier collections, the oldest dating from the 14th century as the book collection owned by the Habsburgs. This place also houses a lot of uh, original manuscripts from Beethoven, Haydn, Mozart, just to name a few. So this is a must visit place for the music enthusiasts too. The library is a testament to the enduring power of human curiosity and the boundless beauty of human creativity. So actually, it is a must visit for anyone from all around the globe that visits Vienna. Talking about globes, what a grand globe behind you! This is a one of the four Venetian globes we have here at the State Hall of the National Library. But if you are interested in globes, I could show you many more in the Globe Museum. That will be interesting, but before you show us more globes, we will dive into a special book, probably not in your library. This purple book contains information on the classification classes and labeling of chemicals and outlines all the requirements for hazard communication. So let me take you to the world of the Global Harmonized System, GHS, including of course the EU CLP revision. And watch the highlights of the interview I had with Paul Ryan and Daniel Reels. What do you think makes GHS and COP a success? I think having a, having a harmonized system for hazard across Europe and globally brings a lot of things. It brings predictability, uh, transparency in decisions that are made. It allows all parties to prepare and map out what's, what's coming. So industry, regulators, uh, sta all stakeholders. Um, Daniel? CLP has replaced a previous regulation for the EU, so it brings a lot of experience, practical experience from the EU countries and the EU uh, authorities and industry uh, to JHS. And I think this practical experience and in leading this process, of course, brings a lot of uh, benefits. And of course, CLP is a reference everywhere. I mean, CLP is a reference for the countries who are building the regulation. The complete interview can be viewed at our website and YouTube channel, or just press the CCTV button in our ChemConnect app. And for those here in the Hilton Vienna Park, you can watch the interview on Channel 1. After this interview on the Global Harmonized System and CLP, we will connect with Charles in the Globe Museum. Charles, please tell us more about the collection of world's only public museum dedicated solely to globes. I'm at the Palais Mola here in Vienna, known for housing the Globe Museum. It houses globes from all around the countries, from all around the regions. And we can find over here globes showing us the constellation of the stars, like in the universe, 
but also globes from our planet, where we can learn something about geography. To visit the Globe Museum is to step back into a time when all things, including cartographic instruments, such as compasses and sextants, were made with care and artistry. The museum provides an excellent way to explore the ways in which man's understanding of the earth and heavens has changed over time. Some of the most interesting items in the museum are the Tellurians. A Tellurian is a mechanical demonstration of the earth as a small rotating globe with a moon spinning around it. At the other end we see the charming disciple sun. With the turn of the crank the system comes alive. As the earth and moon spin, the Tellurian shows us the seasons, the equinox, the dides and quite a lot of other astro astronomical phenomena. Phenomenal! Thank you for showing us these beautiful crafted small representations of our world. More craftsmanship can be seen during tonight's welcome reception. I hope you can join us there. Here it's time for the statement of the day. And in our studio, for this week's first statement of the day, Hendrik Hedlund from the Swedish Chemicals Agency. And since June 2023, the chair of the ECA Forum on Enforcement. Hendrik, welcome. Thank you. Hendrik, Chemcon Europe 2023 will kickstart the Monday with a workshop on enforcement. Why is zero tolerance for non-compliance so important? I would say because when we do enforcement of the chemicals legislation, we find really a lot of non-compliance, sometimes quite harmful substances end up in the supply chain and end up with the European consumer or the worker, uh, especially when it comes to uh, imports and e-commerce. Our latest e-commerce project showed up to over 70% non-compliance in everything we checked. So striving to get that bar down as low as possible is something that we enforcers really would like to do. Okay, and then your statement is enforcement should be enforced or do you have an alternative statement? Yeah, all legislation should be enforceable. Legislation should be enforceable, that's a good statement. We also like to make a statement. Chemcon Europe 2023 should be an event where organizers as well as participants are committed to create a sustainable environment. For this, Chemcon conferences challenge itself to strive for the Austrian eco-label for green meetings and events. Today we will focus on the travel part. Compliance-driven companies and authorities attending Chemcon Europe 2023 this week are coming from all around the world. 27 countries to be precise. We selected a venue that is easily accessible from the airport with the city airport train. In 16 minutes you're right across the street from our meeting venue. And for those arriving by train, it's only three stops by underground or tram. Also during the week we will encourage people to use public transportation, a bike or just walk when moving around Vienna. No matter what the weather is. Yes, even with snow. Talking about snow, what's happening here? Well, I'm at the Snow Globe Museum in Vienna, the place where Erwin Perzi created the very first snow globe in 1900. Today the tradition that Erwin Perzi began is carried on from the same house in Vienna. Here, the third generation from the Perzi family produces the snow globes completely by hand. Each piece is as unique as a snowflake. The museum is a delightful and unique attraction dedicated to the enchanting world of snow globes. Visitors can explore a captivating collection of these whimsical miniature winter wonderlands, each encasing a tiny scene in a glass dome filled with swirling snowflakes. It's a charming and nostalgic experience that offers you a glimpse into the magic of these timeless keepsakes. The weather is great here in Vienna, so no snow in our focus of the day. This morning we will start with a workshop on enforcement, with best practices, focus areas and industry perspectives on enforcement, including inspection insights. It's followed by a seminar on the EU CLP and the global implementation of GHS. Besides the global implementation of GHS, this seminar shows supply chain communication through the lens of downstream users. And we learn more about digitalizing compliance communication along the supply chain. In the afternoon, a seminar on global approach to notification of polymers and new chemicals, with data requirements and the development of a global test program. Also, the transparency of regulatory data versus confidentiality. And in addition to that, the expectations for the new EU REACH data requirements. And uh, what is the latest status on polymers under REACH? To conclude, I would say we are in for an amazing packed Monday with a lot of interesting and need to know information for compliance driven companies. So thank you for watching and for those here in Vienna, looking forward to seeing you at tonight's welcome reception.